Ah, the sound of lost progress. Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. In today's video we're finally taking a look at the Motos motor as we pair it with the 2020 Huffy Cranbrook. They were taking it for its first break-in ride. We'll have thoughts and opinions on both the motor and the bike. The bike has subtle differences which us motorized bike guys will definitely appreciate and the motor which was mostly positive did leave us with one glaring concern which I think I figured out but I'm not sure yet. So stay tuned for future videos to find out how this motor, well, survives, if, yeah, moving right along. Before we get started on this video, I have two quick announcements for you guys. First off, Hurricane Delta is headed straight for us. This is after we just recovered from Laura, so there's a good possibility we'll be without internet for quite some time. If you don't hear from me in a week or two, you'll know why. Our second announcement by popular request is that we have officially opened a Discord server. It's only been up a few days, but currently has over 50 active members. Link down in the description. This is the best way by far to get in contact with me. If you just want to chat with like-minded individuals, you have questions, you need help, or you just want to share pictures and videos. If it's related to motorized bikes, you're welcome to the server. As with pretty much all Cranbrook builds, the installation of this motor kit was a breeze with no major hiccups along the way. Just a few of the quick positives we'll point out on the motor while installing this kit is that the larger 8mm studs are nice and strong. All the hardware was of standard decent quality. I didn't strip out any nuts or bolts and this is something that's easy to do while you're installing the rag joint. Quality just was impressive. I'm happy with the kit so far. The chain tensioner that's included with this kit is nice and thick, has a high quality bearing for the pulley and a nice spacer that does not rub on the bearing preventing the pulley from doing its job. However, I didn't use this chain tensioner on this kit. Now these tensioners are fine in my opinion, but the Cranbrook uses a rounded style chainstay tube, which means that there's nothing really to lock the chain tensioner in place and prevent it from migrating into the spokes if something was to come loose or if it was to get whacked. I'll use these chain tensioners happily on a bike with an oval chainstay tube because they'll really lock onto the bar and they just don't move unless something really bad happens. So on this install I decided to use the standard chain spring tensioner that mounts to the left side of the motor on the sprocket cover. Now although this motor uses the larger 8mm mounting studs, it does not however have the larger lower mounting point. It's not the 40mm lower mount. On most builds that means you're going to end up using the universal adapter plate. Now I found that on Cranbrook builds you'll be using this plate anyways no matter what motor you have. This is because you'll need the motor to be slightly lifted to keep the clutch cover from rubbing on the bike's crank set. Stepping into another positive on the motor that I noticed right away is the entire clutch assembly seems to be a higher quality assembly than you'll gain on most bikes. The plate and the pads are really nice and smooth on their engagement and they lock up really well. And as a matter of fact, the clutch is very predictable when letting it out which really lets you go from a dead stop without pedaling whatsoever. A big negative with this kit is for convenience. The one piece cylinder and head combination is something that nobody really likes. 
It's okay, it's low profile so it might help you in some tight builds, but when it comes to inspecting your piston or cylinder it's just a major inconvenience because, well, you have to take the whole jug off along with the exhaust and the intake to examine the inner bits of the motor. Now this is also another negative if you plan on using a high compression head or just a larger head for better cooling as these one piece jugs tend to overheat more than the two piece jugs. That being said, I think it's going to be okay. I did purchase this motor keeping that in mind so I didn't plan on it being a high performance motor. And there's nothing stopping you from replacing the jug with a two piece cylinder as long as you're willing to drill and tap the motor mount holes to make them a little larger for the studs that will go through the cylinder. With just about everything else on this kit being pretty basic as you would expect at the $130 price point, let's go ahead and move on to the 2020 Huffy Cranbrook. The Cranbrook in my opinion is probably the best beginner's bike for motorizing. It's got a nice wide open triangle which allows you to mount just about any motor you want whether it's electric, two stroke, four stroke, Wider cranks are easily and cheaply available for this bike to accommodate larger motors as well. I've even seen people easily mount entire Predator motors in these frames. Not quite recommended due to the added weight and stress, but it can be done. The quality of the frame, in my opinion, for $100 is fantastic. There are lemons with bad welds, but all the Cranbrooks I've seen so far have nice, decent welds, and the bars just look fine. Every Cranbrook boasts a really comfortable cruiser style seat that's spring loaded and honestly it's just by far the most comfortable seat I've ever sat on, at least for a stock seat. A lot of bikes tend to come with a rock wrapped in plastic and that's what they call a seat. I am not a fan of the handlebars included with the Cranbrook. I just don't care for these style of bars because they contort your wrist at an awkward angle. This might be fine for cruising down a flat road at a steady speed, but when it comes to trying to pedal a heavy bike because of the motor from a dead stop, manipulating the throttle and clutch, it just puts your hands in a really awkward position. I like to replace the handlebars with basically any flat bar that I can find. In general, the Cranbrook is a 26 inch wheel, and this is convenient for both inner tubes just being in stock everywhere. It's got wide standard tires, so you can replace them with something that's more street oriented for speed, or something with a bit of grip if you tend to use it on gravel or dirt. A 26 inch wheel is also a sweet spot when it comes to the sprocket included with these kits. I think the 44 tooth pairs really well with the 26 inch wheel on a stock motor as the motor's power band tends to top out right where you expect it to without over revving or bogging down all the time. Two changes I noticed on the 2020 version, now this could have been from the 2019 version, I'm not sure, but the seat stay tube has a slight bend in it instead of going straight down on the older models, and this bend seems to line up just perfect with the upper motor mount, allowing the motor to easily mount to this frame without stressing the studs for the mounts because it does not force you to position the motor at an awkward angle where one mount is kind of crooked and the other one is flush. It's not an absolutely perfect fit, but it's pretty close. And the second thing I noted on this bike is that the rear wheel mounting points are definitely more substantial. On older versions of the Cranbrook, there were just a small hooked bar. And the problem with that is when you would try to tighten down your rear wheel to keep it from moving under the stress of the motor, it would open the hook and you could never really get a good grip on the rear frame. This would also fatigue the metal because if you opened it and then hammered it back too many times this is a spot where it can crack and break quite easily. And the newer Cranbrooks have a wider thicker bar which makes this more difficult but not impossible to do. I still recommend using a large washer when torquing down on the rear wheel nuts 
but the 2020 version is definitely an upgraded version which is less susceptible susceptible to opening up when you tighten the wheel. And I would also just like to point out that the Cranbrook does have pre-drilled holes in the front and back to accept standard handbrakes. I personally like to have my handbrakes and coaster brakes available. If I just want to slow down a little bit, there's the coaster brake to save wear and tear on the rubber pads. But if I need to come to a quick and secure stop, I can use all three. So that's good to know. My biggest concern with this motor so far, as I'm sure you heard in that clip, is a kind of hammering sound. I'm not exactly sure what's causing it, but I think the squish band is too small on this motor. When I measured it, it came in at 0.49, and I believe for the smaller motors you want at least 0.6 millimeters. So I'm going to replace the cylinder's base gasket with a thicker gasket to hopefully alleviate that issue. If that's not the cause of it, then I could be running too lean as my spark plug did look like it was pretty hot. This is a slightly discolored plug, which tends to mean hot or lean. This is actually the first flat tire I've had on a ride in a long time. But they're the stock inner tubes that come with the Cranbrook, which are paper thin. I usually upgrade these immediately with the heavy duty Goodyear inner tubes. I just hadn't gotten to it yet. Anyways, this is just a first impressions of the motor and bike, this build all together. And after we put a few hundred miles and get well past the break in, we'll go ahead and continue to do videos on this build. As of right now I have a top speed of 31 miles an hour on flat ground. I think we can squeeze a few more miles out of it without modifications but I didn't want to push the bike very hard as we're not even past one full tank yet so that's not a good time to push the motor. Anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this short video. There's going to be another follow-up on this one very soon but I have a lot of bike projects going on at the moment and I'm still working on the 21 millimeter carburetor to see if we can really open up that YD100. Alright guys, ride safe and I'll see you in the next video.